Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Good evening, yes. teacher. I hear you. Good evening, okay, teacher. great. How are you? Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everybody's okay. All right, let's begin. Uh, this is, well, let me just go full screen now, and uh, then I'm going to start sharing the screen with you. Okay. Okay, there it is. As usual, okay, I need to have the attendance list. Just give me a second. Okay, there it is. Okay, uh, when you hear your name, please let me know. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher, how are you? Thank you, um, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Okay, uh, number two, Ana Filomena Mendoza. Present teacher. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michel Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening, welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Present teacher, I'm here. Welcome. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present. Welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Present teacher. Welcome. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. José Raibín Enríquez. Here, teacher. Hello, welcome. Madeline Diana Serón de Paz. Madeline Diana Serón de Paz. Good evening, present. Good evening. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Well, good evening. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hello, I'm here. Welcome. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Welcome. Janet Janira Rodriguez Andres. Present teacher. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. 
Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Okay, we're going to begin now. Um, everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 2. And uh, that's me, Ivan De Yang, at your service once again. So everybody, welcome. This is session 12. And today is October the 12th, 2023, or 2023, as you prefer. So what are we going to do? Well, first things first, we're going to uh, review the forms of communication that we studied yesterday. So uh, where do you find... I am here. I'm Richard. Okay. Hello, Richard. Thank you. Okay, attendance taken. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Thank you, Ricardo. Attendance taken. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. All right. So, where do you find these forms of communication? Put them in the columns below, then add another expression to each category. So, it's not absolutely necessary to do that, but uh, this is what we determined yesterday. Okay, so you have banner ads. Okay, they go on the internet. Okay, billboards on the street or highways. Bus wraps, okay, also on the street or highways, they're on the buses. The crawls, they're on television, okay, those little ads that run from left to right, okay, especially during sports events like soccer matches. Uh, then you have flyers, okay, the pieces of paper that people give you on the street, usually they announce uh, fast food and things like that, or internet service. <laughs> Okay, so uh, then you have infomercials. Okay, those those commercials, those long commercials that usually uh, advertise a product, they usually begin with something like, are you tired of this happening to you, right? And everything turns black and white and a person is having a terrible time. And then they show you the product that will solve all your problems, right? So that's an infomercial. They're usually, they're usually long, okay? Uh, then you have neon signs, okay, which are on street or highways. There's pop-up ads, okay, on the internet. You know, those those ads that you're on a web page and then poof, they just appear, okay, and you need to close them. And then another one, and you need to close them. So there's, there's spam, okay, which is also on the internet. Uh, this is mostly uh, email, unsolicited email. There are telemarketers, okay, the people who call you directly, they get your phone number, okay, and they call you and they usually offer you a product or a service, usually a service. Okay, the, they usually call you from banks or or uh, phone companies. Okay, you know, uh, then you have uh, text messaging. Okay, yeah, I mean, they, they can also, uh, well, people use text messaging to communicate, but also, you know, uh, when they want to sell you a product or offer you a service, they can also send you messages via WhatsApp, for example. And then there is the voicemail, okay, on, on the phone. Sometimes when they can't contact you, they send you some voicemail. Okay, I never hear it. I don't know about you. So uh, this is the same vocabulary we studied yesterday. Uh, there's nothing new right here. So what are we going to do? There's exercise B, which is pair work. We're not going to be working in pairs. We're going to be working, you know, all together here in the class. Uh, which of the above are the most useful ways of communicating information? Okay, the least useful. And do you find any of them annoying? We're going to start with the final question. Do you find any of these ways of communicating information annoying? Okay, some of them that you particularly don't like. Are there any forms of communication in, in the vocabulary that you find annoying? If you want to participate, you may raise your hand. Let's use the, the chance, okay? Don't, don't be shy, okay, let's speak. Let's, let's do some speaking, right? Then then comes the grammar. So let's seize the opportunity. Anyone? In my case, for example, I find uh, uh, this, right? Banner ads, okay? I don't like banner ads, okay, on the internet for several reasons. Number one is because I'm not inter I'm not usually interested in, you know, getting anything, any product or service from a website, okay? I'm usually suspicious about them, so I don't know. Number two is because they use space, okay, on the web page and 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 I mean, I'm I'm not interested, so I don't like them right there. Another one that I don't like are uh pop-up ads, okay? Pop-up ads are 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 annoying. I don't like them, okay? For the same reason, they use up space on the web page, and, and, and usually you want to read something and it just appear. 
and uh, you have to start closing them. And when you close one, another one appears, and then you close it, and then another one appears. And sometimes when you close them, you get a message like, okay, ah, so you didn't like that message. And they ask you, why not? <laughs> okay. And that also gets annoying because it's like, I close them because I don't want to see anything. And they just start asking me questions. It becomes annoying. Spam can be annoying, okay? Uh, because you never ask for that email, but you get the email, okay? And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's annoying. The good thing about, you know, uh, email uh, services is that they usually have like some sort of automatic filter, right? That sends them uh, to special folder, the, the spam folder, but it doesn't always work because sometimes you receive the spam on your inbox. And sometimes there are messages that you're supposed to receive on your inbox that are sent directly to spam. Okay. So you have to be checking both folders on a regular basis because you never know. Okay. Those are the ones that I, that I find kind of annoying mostly on the internet, but what about the rest of you? I, I would like to hear one or two people, don't be shy, come on. One or two people on, on this, which which of these forms of communication or this, which of these ways of communicating information do you find annoying or inconvenient? If you want to participate, please raise your hand. Don't be shy, come on. This is your chance to talk. If you don't talk in class, do you talk outside the class? Do you practice your speaking? I don't think so. Is the opportunity. Well, then no one wants to participate. That's not good. Uh, Debbie, thank you very much. Well, for me, in my opinion, Barner ads, sorry, pop-up ads mm -hmm. are very annoying for me because I think when you accidentally uh, push on that, when you, click you on... go out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you click on, on that, uh, you leave the page that you were that you were reading or something like that. Okay. Yeah, totally. You can you can click on or you can tap on. If you're using a computer, okay, and you're using the mouse, right? You click on something. If you're using a, you know, touch device, you know, touch screen, basically, you tap on them, okay? You don't click on them, but you tap on them. So if it's your phone, you tap on them. If you're using a computer, you click on them. So yeah, I, I understand. Sometimes you accidentally click on those uh, pop-up ads or banners, also banner ads, or you click on them, you tap on them, and, and, and they redirect you to a different web page, okay? And that completely interrupts whatever it is that you were doing on, on, on that uh, web page in the first place. Okay, well, thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much. Thanks for your participation. All right, well, we learned some vocabulary here. Next, uh, next part, okay, 3.9, lesson objective. By the end of this class, participants will know how to use negative and tag questions to give opinions. Okay, so that's lesson objective 3.9. Everybody pay close attention to this. We have the grammar, negative and tag questions for giving opinions. Okay, use negative questions or tag questions to offer an opinion and invite someone to react. So how does that work? Okay, well, you you, you start this, uh, you use, a, it's a question, it's the same structure of a question, but the auxiliary verb is in negative form. That's pretty much the difference. If you know how to ask a question in a specific verb tense, you can also ask a question in negative form. How do you do it? It's very easy. You just use the auxiliary verb in negative form, and that's it. Only that. So uh, normally you will ask you will ask the question. Uh, let's see. You have an example here. Oops. Okay, uh, you have, isn't it weird how some people are always on their cell phone? Okay, normally you will ask the question with the verb be like this. Uh, in an affirmative sentence, you will say it is. Okay, it is, that's affirmative. Okay, uh, please stop drawing on the screen. Let's see if I can. Thank you, okay. Let's continue. All right, so uh, we have this. Uh, this will be an affirmative sentence. You say, it is, it is. 
um, if you want to ask a question, then you say, is it, okay? Basically, basically the verb be and the subject change places, okay? Is it, it is. If you want to ask a negative question, it's pretty easy. You just have to make the auxiliary or in this case, the verb be because that's the main verb in negative form. So the negative form of is, is, isn't, isn't it? And then that's your question. Pretty simple. Okay. Uh, if you say, for example, it an affirmative form, it would, okay. And then you pin, you continue your sentence. Okay, uh, the question form, because it's a modal auxiliary verb, you say, would it, okay, would it. And then if you want to make it negative, you just have to use the negative form of the auxiliary verb. And you say, wouldn't it, okay. And then you have a negative question. It's actually pretty, pretty easy. You have to be careful though with present simple and past simple. Okay, you have to be very careful with that. Uh, particularly when you have an affirmative sentence and then you want to transform that into a question. It doesn't really matter if it is affirmative or negative. Okay, uh, you have to be careful because it, when you're using present simple and past simple uh, in affirmative sentences, you don't need the auxiliaries. Okay, you don't, you don't really need the auxiliary verbs. Okay, so um, for example, you can say uh, you work. Okay, you work and then you continue your sentence. Okay, you have to be careful right there because you're not going to ask a question like, were you? Okay, now that will be completely incorrect. Okay, you don't ask a question like that because this is present simple. You need to use the auxiliary. And the auxiliary verb that you use in present simple is do. Okay, do when the subject is he, uh, sorry, I, you, we, or they, and you use does when the subject is he, she, or it. Okay. So in this case, you have, do you work, okay? And if you want to ask a negative question, then you have to use the auxiliary in negative form. So you have to ask, don't you work, okay? That's a negative form. So it's actually, uh, it's, 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 it's easy, right? If, if you want to use the past, for example, in this case, you worked, okay? That's another case, past simple. In past simple, you don't find auxiliary verbs in affirmative sentences. I mean, not usually, it is possible under certain circumstances, but normally you don't find them. So you say you worked, that's affirmative. If you want to ask a question, then you have to use the auxiliary verb of past simple. That auxiliary verb is did. So you said, did you work? All right, did you work? And if you want to ask a negative question, then simply you have to transform the auxiliary verb into a negative auxiliary verb. And then you have, didn't you work? Can you give me a second, please? Thank you. So you have, didn't you work? So uh, that's the idea, right? When you ask a negative question, basically you have to use the auxiliary verb in negative form and that makes the whole difference, okay? That makes a difference. So uh, you have this, use negative questions or tag questions, that's the other thing that we're about to study, to offer an opinion and invite someone to react. So you have this. Isn't it weird how some people are always on their cell phones? Okay, isn't it weird how some people are always on their cell phones? When you ask a question, particularly a negative question like this, it's because you want the other person to participate in um, some uh, opinion conversation. Okay, you are asking, or you're asking the opinion of the other person, right? So what is what is your idea? Your idea is that it is weird, okay, that that uh, some people are always on their phones. So if 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 you want to talk about your opinion, okay, you're offering your opinion, and you want the other person to contribute to your opinion, then you ask a question like this: You say, "Isn't it weird?" how some people are always on their cell phones, okay? Maybe the other person will say like, yeah, definitely, right? I mean, don't they have anything else to do, right? Okay, just to give you an idea of how the conversation can go down. Like, so uh, you also have the next one. Doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of their TV, okay? This will be present simple, okay? And it's like, it seems, uh, like, okay, uh, kids spend, spend 
too much time, etc. Right? In front of the TV. Okay, so we have this. It seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV. All right. All right, so it seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV. So what are we going to do here? Well, you just have to transform this sentence into a question, okay? But to do that, it's, it's, it's very important for you to identify the verb tense. It seems, okay, this is present simple. And you know that when you're using present simple, you have to use uh, two very specific auxiliary forms. And those are do or does. Present simple, do or does. Past simple, did, okay? Okay, just a second. All right. So it seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV. So the question will be, does it seem, and take a look at this, right? Okay, the S disappears because in the question, in present simple, the verb goes back to base form. Does it seem like kids spend too much time in, I think I'm going to copy this. It's kind of hard to be retyping everything in from the TV. Hey. So does it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the TV? And now if you want to make the negative question, you just have to use the, the, the auxiliary verb in negative form, okay? And you just say, doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the TV? That's all. That's how you make a negative question. Just turn the uh, auxiliary verb into negative form. Only that. Okay, so another example. Okay, wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? Okay, so uh, the affirmative sentence will go like this, right? It would be great if everyone had a cell phone like that. So if you want to ask a question, because the auxiliary is already here, okay? So you just have to use the auxiliary at the beginning and you say, would it be great if blah, 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 you finish the question. And if you want to make the negative question, well, you just use the auxiliary would in negative form. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if uh, everyone had a cell phone like that? Shouldn't the government limit the number of sites? Okay, that's another example. Affirmative sentence. You have the government, government should uh, limit the number of sites. Okay, that's the affirmative sentence. The question will be, because you have a modal auxiliary here, you have to use a modal auxiliary at the beginning. Should the government uh, limit the number of sites, right? And if you want to make it negative, just use the auxiliary at the beginning and make it negative. Shouldn't the government limit, you know, the number of sites, like the one you have here? So those are the negative questions, okay? Before we continue, do you have any questions about the negative questions? Do you have questions about this type of question? Is it clear? Okay, I'll take that as uh, no questions. Next, I get email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, tag questions. Okay, that's the other way of asking someone's opinion. A tag question is like a very small question that you ask at the end of a sentence, not at the end of a question, okay? You add a tag question to a statement. You don't add a tag question to a question. So be careful right there. So you have, for example, I get email on my cell phone. That's a sentence. And after that, that's another sentence. There's another sentence, right? That's nice. That's a complete sentence. That's nice, comma. And then you add it at the tag question, isn't it? Okay. TV makes kids lazy, doesn't it? Now, tag questions are a little bit more difficult to use because you have to, again, you need to identify the verb tense. That's essential. You identify the verb tense and based on that, then you ask your tag question. So how do you do it? Okay, it's, it's pretty much the same logic. Okay, so 
imagine that I'm going to eliminate all of these sentences here. Uh, the negative questions, I'm sorry. In the government limit. Okay, so it seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV. Okay, so we have this one. It's present simple because you have it seems. Okay, so once you identify the verb tense, then you just have to use the auxiliary of that verb tense, like in a very short question. It seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV, comma. Does anybody know the tag question for this? Doesn't it? Who said that? Romero. Ah, hello, thank you. Let us raise our hands always. Oh, okay. Thank you, Miss <laughs> Romero. Okay, so it seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV. Doesn't it? That's a question tag or tag question. Doesn't it? Exactly. Okay, doesn't it? But there is another thing that's very important. If the sentence is affirmative, the tag question will be negative. If the sentence is negative, the tag question will be affirmative. Okay, that's something to remember. It will be great if everyone had a cell phone like that. Okay, that's another one. It would be great if every, everyone had a cell phone like that. Now, you identify the verb tense. There's really no verb tense here. It's just a model auxiliary and a verb. So you have to use the same model auxiliary. It would be great if everyone had a cell phone like that. What is the tag question? Who can tell me the answer? Raise your hands, please. We'll say it, I think. Does it? Be careful. You're using the modal auxiliary here. The modal is would. Ah, good, good it. Would it? Okay. But there is a little problem. Yeah, sorry, good in it. Wouldn't it? Aha, uh -huh, that's correct. Okay, yeah, that that's more like it. Wouldn't it? Because the sentence is affirmative. If the sentence is affirmative, then the tag will be negative. If the sentence is negative, then the tag will be affirmative. It changes, right? Okay, yeah, that's right. It would be great if everyone had a cell phone like that, wouldn't it? That's correct. And uh, the last one, the government, Janet Janira. Uh, hi, I have a question. Sure, what's your question? Uh, for example, if I can say, uh, if I can to say, I love, I love the pizza. Um, what will be the, the tag question? Uh, don't I? However, it will be a very, very, very unusual tag question because, because you're asking an opinion on something that you know is a fact. You love pizza. Okay. Yeah. So it, I mean, you can say don't I, but, but it's, but it will be very, uh, extremely unusual. Okay. To ask a, a tag like that. Mm-hmm. And if I say I hate the cats, uh, it's the same thing. You're you're stating a fact about something that you hate. So, I hate cats, don't I? Okay, it sounds like nobody will ask a tag question like that. Maybe you can comment on another person. Like you can say you hate cats. Okay, if that's the case, you say you hate cats, don't you? Okay, or okay. you can say. You love pizza, don't you? Now that's different okay. uh -huh, because you're talking about a different person. But if you're referring to yourself, it's it, it will be like very unusual to 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 add a tag question at the end of a statement like that. Okay, okay. I have I have this question because mm. uh, the platform has in, in the final There's exam have, has uh, uh, an exercise like this. Okay, um, which exercise is it? Um in the um, C in the in the section C part C uh, section C uh the the number five I hate getting spams. Okay, let me check. Section C tag questions and reduce relative clauses.
there's actually a mistake right there, okay? Because uh, the answer that I'm getting right here will be don't you, but it doesn't make sense, okay? So it says, I, I hate getting spams. I believe that when they were typing in the exercise, I imagine that they, they got the, the subject of the sentence wrong. It should be you hate getting spams. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh so uh, the answer... I mean, it's not correct, but the answer that you have to type in is don't you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, always happy to help. Um, I, I saw so, uh, Debbie also raising her hand, I believe. Debbie, did you have a question? No, it's everything clear about okay, okay. that. All right. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions before we continue? No more questions. Okay, well, let's take a look at this one, right? The government should limit the number of sites. What about the tag right here? What will be the tag question in this case? Profino Milkar. Shouldn't. Okay. Shouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Correct. Okay. So, shouldn't. yeah. No? Ah, shouldn't. sorry. Shouldn't, shouldn't it? Yeah, it's true. Should. Should I need, I need glasses. <laughs> okay. No, I don't need glasses. I'm just tired. So shouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. Shouldn't it? Now, um, what about this? Right, the government should limit the number of sites. Shouldn't it? Not yet. Thank you, Rafino. That's the correct answer. Teacher, I have a question. What's your question about the first uh, the the three exercise first exercise the uh, first sentence the first sentence uh, the answer is short we can use short answer or not and a different and the and the example you hate cats don't you okay so um short answers or are we talking about tag questions or the short or the or the answer to the tag question? The answer. The answer. To the okay. Tag question. So yes. it seems uh -huh. like okay. So the first one goes. It seems like kids spend too much time in front of the TV, doesn't it? Okay. You can answer yes, it does, but but it sounds very um, again unusual. Okay. Normally, when you ask a tag question like "doesn't it," people would just say like "yeah." <laughs> but normally no but no one will say like yes it does okay like this one well, or or this one right you have here you hate cats don't you okay some people will say like yeah that's right okay you can answer of course yes i do i mean if it's the other person the other person can probably say yes i do although it will be a little bit unusual for that person to answer a tech question like that uh Maybe a short answer will be reserved for a more standard question. Yes, no questions like, uh, do you like pizza? Okay. Now that will be a regular yes, no question using the present simple. In that case, you can say, yes, I do. No, I don't. Okay. But it is not usual to use a short answer to, an to, to answer a tag question. Okay. Normally you will have to use a different word to do it. Like you can say, yeah. Or that's right, or you're right. Or you can say, on the contrary, okay? And then you correct the other person. All right, then. Um, let's take a look. So I get email on my cell phone, period. And then the new sentence begins. That's nice, comma, isn't it? Okay. TV makes kids lazy, doesn't it? It's present simple. That's why you have to use doesn't it. Now you use the phrase, don't you think, to form negative or tag questions like this. Don't you think there are too many websites? No crees que hay muchos sitios web. So don't you think there are too many websites? Or you can say, it's actually dangerous, comma, don't you think? You can also use don't you think at the end of a, of the, yeah, it's pretty much like a tag. You use it at the end. So it's actually dangerous, don't you think? No crees? So just for you to keep this in mind. Now, that's the explanation of negative uh, questions for uh, negative and tag questions for giving opinions. So what are you going to do? You're going to do exercise B, which is uh, 
uh, an exercise we have right here, negative attack questions for giving opinions, turn the statements into negative or attack questions, then ask the answer and ask the question, discuss uh, your answers. Now, what do you have to do? You have to give me both versions of it. We're going to use the first one as an example. You have, it's sad how so many trees are being cut down to create junk mail. So if you use a negative sentence, you will say, isn't it sad how so many trees are being cut down to create junk mail? And if you use a tag question, you have to repeat the same statement and add the tag at the end. It's sad how many trees are being cut down to create junk mail, isn't it? So that's what you have to do right there. I just gave you an example. So you have to tell me the negative sentence and also you have to tell me the statement with the tag question, both versions. What about number two? They should get rid of those banner ads on the internet. Negative question, who knows? Janet, Janira. Um. Shouldn't they get rid of uh, those banner ads on the internet? Shouldn't they get rid of those banner ads on the internet? Correct. And what about the tag question? Uh, they should get rid of those banner ads on the internet. Uh, shouldn't it? The subject is not it. Or shouldn't they? Shouldn't Sorry. they. Uh -huh, that's right. Okay. They should get rid of pronunciation, by the way. Get rid they should get rid of those banner ads on the internet shouldn't they get rid of something eliminate something that's the meaning of get rid of something thank you janet <laughs> that is correct thank You're you welcome. very much okay have some water okay uh miss romero uh the second one then rufino and then Bayer. okay number number three not the second one but number three okay um wouldn't it be great if there were fewer billboards. Okay, the statement was it would be great if there were fewer billboards. And wouldn't it be great if there were fewer billboards? Okay, that's correct. What about the tag? It would be great if there were fewer billboards. Um, wouldn't it? It would be great if there were fewer billboards, wouldn't it? That is correct. Okay, yeah, that's right. Good, 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 good. Thank you very much. Rufino Amilcar, it is your turn. Okay, I for number try, uh, four. four. Teachers should ban uh, text messaging during exams. And shouldn't, shouldn't teachers? Shouldn't teachers uh, ban text messaging during exams? Shouldn't teachers ban text messaging during exams? That is right. Very good. That's a negative question. What about the tag? Um, teachers, teacher bans. Teachers teacher should ban. Text ban. Oh, huh? oh, oh. <laughs> it's the same segment. So you have teachers should ban. Teacher, uh, okay. Uh, teacher, teachers should ban text messaging during exams. Um, shouldn't it? The subject is not it. it. Is shouldn't? Uh, shouldn't shouldn't they? Shouldn't they? Uh, correct. Shouldn't because teachers. you're. Aha! Uh -huh, but when you shouldn't add they? a tag, aha! Uh -huh, when you add a tag, okay, you have to use a pronoun. That's another rule. So teachers should ban text messaging during exams. Shouldn't they? That is correct. Thank you, Rufino. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Now uh, the next one, number five, Byron. Okay, it's scary that opening a, a spam email could expose your computer to a virus. Okay, isn't it scary that opening a spam email could expose your computer to a virus? That's right. What about the tag? Okay, it's scary that opening a small spam email could expose your computer to a virus, isn't it? That's right. Very good. Thank you, Byron. Okay. You got both right. And number six, the last one, who can help me with this? Please raise your hand. There are too many channels on TV these days. How about the last one? Raise your hand if you want to participate, please.
come on, the last one. You've been participating with all the other ones, and the last one is like, okay, Nadia. <laughs> ah, by the way, um, the, okay, I believe that I, I understand why you didn't want to participate because there's a mistake here. It says they are, but should be there are. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to. I mean, I didn't write this. This is a, it's a mistake okay. in the book. There I, are. I can see, I can see you very well, teacher, and I, I see they. Ah, uh, no, should be there. There are. There okay. are. I'm okay. sorry. Are, are not, are, are not they too many channels to TV these days? Should be, aren't, aren't there, right? Aren't there too many channels on TV these days? Mm -hmm. And the other is it, it's the same sentence, it, right? Yeah. The only thing is that remember that. Uh, okay, I'm going to type it here. Okay, so that should be there are too many channels on TV these days. That's the sentence. There are too many channels on TV these days. So you, you gave me this one. Aren't there too many channels on TV these days? What about the second one with the tag? Uh, are not, no, are not? Mm -mm. It's the same sentence. It's basically the same sentence. You just have to add a comma. And after that, the tag question. Uh, are, are, uh, okay. Uh -huh. There are too many channels on TV these days. Are, are, are there? Are there. Okay. So like this. Are there? Oops. What did I do? <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, so there are too many channels on TV these days. You told me, are there? Uh, I hate this keyboard. Okay, are there? All right, uh, good, but there's one little problem. Let's, let's see, uh, maybe uh, I'm going to give a chance to Maritza because she hasn't participated today, but thank you, Ravin. Uh, Marisa, what, how can you contribute to this? It's negative. Should be negative. Are, oh. aren't, aren't there? Aren't there, correct. There are too many channels on TV these days, aren't there? Yeah, remember, if the, stent, the sentence or the statement is affirmative, then the tag question should be negative. If the sentence is negative, the tag question is affirmative. So yeah, there are too many channels on TV these days, aren't there? Okay, so thank you. Thank you all for your participations participation, I'm sorry, on this exercise. 8.43, wow, time flies, especially when you're doing grammar. So, um, all right, so for the next exercise, uh, this is the grammar extra, by the way, this is not in the uh, material, so I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay, so uh, you have it in WhatsApp now. So take a look. Use the past negative and tag questions to get an opinion about a past event. So didn't you think the manager's speech was a little boring? You can say the manager's speech was a little boring, didn't you think? Okay, the manager's speech was a little boring, wasn't it? The manager has given some pretty boring speeches, hasn't he? The manager's speech had just put everyone to sleep when the fire alarm rang, hadn't it? Now, in informal spoken English, they can be used as the pronoun in tag questions when the subject is somebody, someone, everybody, everyone, nobody, or no one. Why is that? Because when you say somebody, you don't know if it's a man or a woman. When you say someone, again, you don't know if it's a man or a woman. When you say everybody, that takes into account several people. When you say everyone, same idea. When you say nobody, that means no person. So no man, no woman, and no one is the same thing. So because uh, determining, okay, who 
the person is, who the person you're talking about is, is difficult, you can use the subject they, like this. Almost everyone has a cell phone these days, don't they? Yes, they do. Somebody has hacked into your computer, haven't they? Because somebody is like, could be one person, two people, okay? We don't know if they're men, if they're ladies. So you say, yes, they have, no, they haven't. And you use an affirmative tag question when the subject is negative, such as nobody or nothing. Like nobody, that makes it negative automatically. Nobody left a voicemail messages. Any voicemail messages, did they? So negative becomes affirmative. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Some extra information right there. I just want you to, to do this exercise for me. Um, and that is turn the statements into negative questions. Only negative questions. Okay, no tags this time. Only negative questions. It would be great if telemarketers didn't call at dinner time. So you say, wouldn't it be great if telemarketers didn't call at dinner time? What about the next one, Janita? Uh, please, teacher, could you share the last the last screen, please? Sure. Uh, yes, because I I don't understand when, for example, when the sentence the mayor the manager speech was a little boring. Mm -hmm. Didn't you think? Mm -hmm. Why don't you use uh, wasn't? Ah, uh, because this time you're you're okay. You have two versions of it. The first version, the second version is the manager's speech was a little boring, wasn't it? When you say wasn't it, you are you you are referring directly to the manager's speech. You're talking about the manager's speech. That's why you say wasn't it. But in La the other one, uh -huh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at. So the manager's speech was a little boring, didn't you think? Okay. Uh, this time you're asking the opinion of the other person. Ah. Uh. Uh -huh. It's like, didn't you think? No, no crees? Or no te pareció? Right? Didn't yeah. you think? That's that's the reason. It's when my say, it's my opinion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're, you're asking for at, the other person. my opinion. Uh -huh. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's okay. the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, All right, then. Uh, in, in the, sure. Excuse me, teacher. No problem. And the lesson of the manager. The manager speech has just put everyone to sleep when the fire alarm rang. Hadn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it's about the alarm. No, it's about, it's what the manager speech did, did in quotation marks, because it's, <laughs> the manager speech uh, had just put everyone why to sleep. Why is it? Because you're talking about the manager's speech. speech. Uh -huh. You're talking about the speech. That's why. The speech. It's speech. Mm -hmm. That's why. Okay. And you use hadn't because you're you're using past perfect here. Had just put had put past perfect. So you use hadn't it. But yeah, you're talking about the speech specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to to study more that. Mm. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so uh, you have, it would be great if telemarketers didn't call at dinner time. So wouldn't it be great if telemarketers didn't call at dinner time? How about number two? It's awful how so much paper is wasted on flyers that nobody reads. How about this one? Who knows? Please raise your hand. Only a negative question. Jenny, and then Maritza. Yeah. Isn't awful? You for you how forgot the subject. You said isn't. Isn't awful? How so much paper is going take, take a look. Take a look at this. Okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt. So okay. uh, you have it's awful. Blah blah mm -hmm. blah. Okay, but take a look. This is a contracted form. It's means it is. Uh huh. So. Isn't. Uh huh. Isn't. Aha, uh -huh. so you say isn't. Isn't awful. You're forgetting the subject. Uh, isn't how, how so much? Mm -mm. The subject is here. Ah, uh, isn't it? Uh -huh. isn't That's right. Isn't, isn't it? Awful. <laughs> yes. Awful. Yeah. Okay. So, how so much paper is wasted of 
flyers that nobody reads. Isn't it awful how so much paper is wasted on flyers that nobody reads? Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. okay. Maritza, that infomercial we watched was ridiculous. I tried it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, wasn't wasn't that info wasn't that info commercial? Inf infomercial? If the information, I know, I know what <laughs> wasn't that information we watched ridiculous. Wasn't that infomercial we watched ridiculous? That's correct. That's correct. Thank you, Maritza. Byron, number four, office towers should have to turn out all their lights at night. Okay, shouldn't it office hours have to turn out all Careful. their lights? And... Careful, you, you added uh, a subject that is not necessary. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Basically, you don't need to add anything. You just need to change words, uh, the place of certain shouldn't words. It so have be careful, be careful. And... Be careful, be careful. In cases like this one, you say it is awful. That's why you say it. Isn't it awful? But in this case, you don't have it. Office towers should have to turn out all their lights at night. If you don't have the subject it, don't use it. Shouldn't office towers have uh -huh. to turn out at night? Shouldn't okay. office towers have to turn out all their lights at night? Because the subject is office towers. Mm-hmm. That's right. Thank you, Byron. Uh, number five, there used to be pay phones on almost every corner downtown. How about this one? Who knows? This one is a bit more difficult. Uh-huh, who would like to try? This one is more difficult. Janet, Janita, Rodriguez, Andres. Um, I think uh, we maybe can to use uh, aren't there used to pay phones almost every corner downtown? Not really, not really, but thank you for participating. First thing we need to know is, or maybe you can tell me, I mean, anybody, what verb tense are we using? Is it present simple, past simple, present continuous, present perfect? What is it? Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. Hi, uh, everybody. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, okay, Miss Romero, what is it? <laughs> it is simple past. It's simple past. Okay, that's right. Therefore, yeah. what auxiliary do we need? D. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have it, Miss Romero? I think. Okay. Um, didn't there used to be pay forms on almost every corner downtown? Mm -hmm. Didn't there mm -hmm. used to be pay phones on almost every corner downtown? Mm -hmm. No solía haber eh, teléfonos de moneditas, verdad, en cada esquina del centro. So didn't there used to be pay phones on almost every corner downtown? That's right. So in this case, teacher, there is the subject, right? There is the subject, exactly. There is the subject. When you say there is, there are, there used to be, et cetera, et cetera, there is the subject. That's correct. Okay. Um, thank you. That that was that was that was good. Number six, he had been thinking of getting a new computer. How about this one? Just remember, take a look at the auxiliary and the subject, change places, and make the auxiliary negative, and that's your question. So, who can help me?
Marisa, thank you. Um, Hal not he been thinking of getting a new computer? Hadn't he been thinking of getting a new computer? That's right. Okay. Although normally you will have to use the contracted form, hadn't, right? But yeah, that's that's essentially the answer. Thank you, Maritza. Cesar, about number seven. Kids should spend less time playing video games. Should, uh, shouldn't shouldn't kids spend less time playing video games? Shouldn't kids spend less time playing video games? That is correct. Thank you, Cesar. That's right. right. Number eight. Some people get really addicted to computer games. How about this one? What verb tense is this? Some people get. What verb tense is that? Maritza. Mm, it's present. Present simple. So what auxiliary do you need? Do and does. That's, that's right. That's right. Okay. So all yours, Maritza. Do. Uh -huh. Don't some people get really addicted to computer games? That's right. Don't some people get really addicted to computer games? That is correct. Thank you, Maritza. Very good. Okay, that's that's the answer. That's the question. Okay, so um, there you go. Very good. We don't have much time. So, I mean, we're just going to do the final exercise, which is a listening exercise. It was this other exercise, but I guess you can have it as homework if you want to solve it. Okay, so I'm going to be sending it to you here. What's up? This is extra practice. We were supposed to do it in class, but in the end, we don't have the time. It's, it's about to be nine. So instead, um, let me go for the next one. It's the listening part. Okay. So health and technology. Listen to a news report on technology. What is the report about? Check the correct answer. A, a new high-tech medical treatments. Sorry, new high-tech medical treatments, B, new health problems caused by technology, or C, vacation ideas for people who dislike technology. Listen to it and tell me which one it is, please. Here we go. Listen to a news report on technology. Can you hear that? What is the report about? Check the correct answer. Yes. 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 Thank you. Sports and weather are coming up. But first, here's Health Watch with our medical specialist, Dr. Linda Byrne. Dr. Byrne, there's no question that technological advances in the last decade or two have made our lives easier, but all this technology has its downsides as well, doesn't it? That's right, Peter, especially for those suffering from syndromes caused by the stress of our high-tech lifestyles. And this is a relatively recent development, isn't it? Definitely. Such syndromes were nearly unheard of in 1980, before the growth of the Internet and the high-tech industry. Since 1990, however, nearly 300 cases of technology-related stress syndrome were identified. There was a slight drop-off after 1990, but soon the number of cases jumped to three times 1990's rate, which is where it stands today. Could you give us some examples? Well, one of these syndromes is eye strain in which the eyes become red, watery, and itchy. Eye strain is caused by long hours in front of the computer and compounded by long nights playing video games or watching TV without getting much sleep. One treatment that's recommended is to get away for several days and just look at some beautiful natural scenery with no computers. The second is the well-known carpal tunnel syndrome, a very painful condition of the hands and arms caused by the overuse of keyboards and mice. A trained physical therapist can help with a regimen of stretching and strengthening exercises that have brought good results in many cases. So the syndromes are usually physical? There can also be psychological problems. Take, for instance, a third syndrome we informally call gadget addiction, 
It applies to people who use electronics all day long, nonstop. These people have a deep sense of loneliness whenever they hang up their cell phone or log off the internet. One suggested treatment is to learn to disconnect from the wired world. Leave technology behind for a few hours. Take up a creative hobby or go for a bike ride with friends. Just be sure to leave all the gadgets alone. Thanks, Dr. Byrne. And for more information, go to our website and click on our Health Watch link. And then turn off the computer. <laughs> all right. So uh, what was the report about, A, B, or C? Janet, Janita. Mara B. B, new health problems caused by technology. That is correct. Now, because of the time, okay, uh, we're going to go directly over the version that you can find on the website, which is this. Here's the answer, but okay. Listen, exercises. So the first part is letter B, definitely. Okay. And then um, listen again and choose the problems doctor, the doctor mentioned. Which one is the first, second, and third problem? Okay. So what is the first problem? Is it carpal tunnel syndrome, eye strain, or gadget addiction? Which one is it? Do you remember? What was the first problem? No, me. No, I mean, your microphone. Number two. Number uh, two. Problem number one will be eye strain. Is that what you mean? Eye strain. Eye yes. strain. Yeah, that's right. It's mm -hmm. eye strain. What about problem okay. number two? Okay, which one is it? Who can tell me? Maritza. Um. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome. I think I suffer from that actually. <laughs> okay, carpal tunnel syndrome. Thank you, Maritza. And the third one, quite obviously, will be gadget addiction. Okay, for the next part of the listening exercise. Um, so uh, symptoms were eye strain. What is it? You have uh, using gadgets all day long, a deep sense of loneliness, eye becomes red, water itchy, Pain in the hands and arms. Miss Romero, and then Cesar. Question two, eyes become red, watery, and itchy. Yeah, that's right. Eyes become red, watery, and itchy. Good. Cesar, symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. Is pain, pain in the hands and arms. And arms, pain, pain in the hands and arms. That's pain correct. That's that is good. And the last one, quite obviously, is symptoms for gadget addiction. It's using gadgets all day long, a deep sense of loneliness. It's the deep sense of loneliness is the symptom, actually. Okay, that will be the end of it. That's uh, listening exercise 3.11. Okay, so with that, we finish the platform. I would like to use this opportunity to remind everybody to work on on the platform. Por favor, todos trabajen en la plataforma, verdad, que no se les queden ejercicios que no hayan hecho. Los videos que están ahí, véanlos de principio a fin para que les tome como completo también cualquier actividad, ejercicio, lo que sea que aparezca, complétenlo, por favor, porque todo contribuye, todo es acumulativo, verdad, y contribuye a que vayamos eh, completando lo que el, el porcentaje que tenemos que tener para poder pasar el nivel. ¿verdad? Así que, por favor, si hay algo que todavía no han completado, les invito, aunque ya haya pasado, ¿verdad? Eh, el tiempo para entregarlo, complétenlo, complétenlo, porque al final todo eso cuenta, ¿de acuerdo? Voy a pasar asistencia. Attendance now, um, very quickly, is Daisy Carolina Rodríguez online. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. He's here, teacher. Welcome. Jose Arturo Ramírez Bernal. Present, teacher. Thank you. Um, Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present, teacher. Totally. Okay, thank you. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Welcome. And that's it. Everybody's here. Very good. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, next week is the last, so please get, I mean, you'll be more than welcome to, you know, connect to the meeting, join the meetings. So uh, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Remember, no class tomorrow.
Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, night teacher. Bye. Thank you. Monday. See you Monday.